Good evening and welcome. You're watching Left, Right and Centre with me, Sanket Upadhyay. Three stories that we are tracking right here on the show over the next 60 minutes. Story number one. You see what has happened is that post Rahul Gandhi's disqualification, we saw all opposition players come together. It appeared as if this is finally a situation where the index of opposition unity will be a reality. But then came the Sharad Pawar bomb in an interview to NDTV, very clearly taking a divergent line than the rest of the opposition and particularly the Congress party. Now, another attempt is being made, uh, a shot at opposition unity by Nitish Kumar. And while all of this is happening, we also know that some parties are now no more enjoying the perks and privileges of being a national party. They've been downgraded. It's a requirement. If you don't win elections, obviously you'll be downgraded. So has this become ahead of 2024 an existential battle in the opposition with some parties de-recognized, uh, some parties uh, de-recognized as a national party but recognized as a regional party now, uh, others not even recognized as a state party. So is this an existential battle because of which all of them are coming together? And of course the big, uh, uh, big uh, you know, mention over here is the Aam Admi Party in the opposition space growing and growing and growing over the past 20 years. Story number two, Nirmala Sitaraman's minority report. The finance minister uh, on foreign soil, when asked a question on uh, incidents of violence and targeted attacks on the minorities, made a very strong pitch in her favour. Now, has she stated a fact or has she avoided an embarrassment? Because there are many players and people in India who feel that what she said over there and what the reality is are not the same. So we are going to debate that also in just a short moment. And story number three, the big controversy down south in a pole-bound state of Karnataka, Amul versus Nandini, the entry of Amul, cooperative versus cooperative, state versus state. The MD or the managing director of Amul, Mr. Jain Mehta is going to join us and clear the air as to what exactly does Amul intend to do in Karnataka. So let us begin this edition of Left, Right and Centre. Alright, but we are going to begin this, uh, uh, this part of Left, Right and Centre with uh, actually the, the big gainer or the winner as far as uh, uh, you know being upgraded. Uh, we are talking about the Aam Admi Party which in its 12 years of existence uh, about 10 odd years in active politics has now become or has been recognized as a national party. I have with me Mr. Raghav Chadda is an MP of the Aam Admi Party. Raghav, uh, I assure you we are going to talk about Rajniti and nothing else. Uh, mm, thank you. Have, you. You're, you're very kind. You're very kind. <laughs> you have uh, in 10 years attained uh, the title of being a national party. Uh, your leader today said that uh, this is nothing short of a miracle. Do you also, to quote Spider-Man, uh, fear that with great power comes great responsibility? <clears throat> uh, Sanket, first of all, this is a day of joy and happiness for all of us. And it's a, it's a day where I think thousands and thousands of Aam Aadmi Party volunteers also get a little emotional because for the last one decade all of us have been working tirelessly we've put in our blood sweat tears and toil uh, for the Aam Aadmi Party to grow and we have been growing by leaps and bounds because of the trust that people of India have reposed in us you know we are the fastest growing political startup in the history of independent India in less than a decade of our existence we had two governments, Punjab and Delhi, two big state governments. We have 10 members of parliament. We have numerous councillors. We have MLAs in Goa and Gujarat. And we are growing at a rapid pace. I pray to God that we continue growing at this uh, accelerated pace. And this big vacuum of a different kind of politics, a new brand of politics, uh, which I refer to as alternative form of politics, uh, is very much there and this vacuum uh, has existed in India's politics for a while and I think Aam Aadmi Party has managed to fill that vacuum to a very significant extent and going forward we will occupy the space of alternative politics in this country. Raghav Chadda, uh, I hope you realize that while you are talking about uh, 
uh, occupying a vacuum and uh, you know giving yourself uh, really ambitious targets ahead of 2024 the reality also is that uh, uh, the aam aadmi party does not have uh, any lok sabha member right you have representatives in the rajya sabha my my question over here raghav is that uh, would you be uh, overly ambitious in this journey or would you like a little bit of practicality for instance collaborating with other like minded parties in the opposition i e opposition unity look <clears throat> i have for a very long time believed that uh, it is not the index of opposition unity or the index of opposition political parties unity that matters i think it is the index of india's people's unity to bring in change to to dislodge a regime to bring in a new regime etc that matters most and let us rewind back to and i very often give this example that i see 2024 as the 1977 moment where all political parties the socialists the communists the jansanghis all got together under one banner of janta party under the principle of one candidate uh, of the opposition against one candidate of the that mighty congress and they ended up defeating uh, the mighty congress the mrs gandhi this is indira gandhi's congress i mean that congress enjoyed great goodwill and and humongous power post 71 war post the liberalization of bangladesh mrs gandhi's popularity was at its peak no one could even conceive the idea that mrs indira gandhi could be voted out of power but in 77 not just the political parties people of india got together and mrs indira gandhi mr sanjay gandhi themselves lost their own seats uh, in in uh, in the state of uttar pradesh and the janta party uh, which was a which was one uh, as an amalgamation of all these forces won 295 seats out of 405 seats that they contested and i am given to understand roughly 70% uh, of the seats that they won was with a huge margin of more than 25% vote share so it's it was an overwhelming victory and it was a vote for change a vote to defeat indira gandhi and to vote her out of office i think something similar should happen in the year 2024 it is about the people's unity people of india need to come together yeah but then and that's only to when come together on agree. issues for instance raghav chadda will your party agree or will other political formations agree to an arrangement like this i hope you realize this is a great arrangement a very tall ask to curb your ambition well, somewhere be ambitious somewhere else cooperate collaborate I think the, the ambition or the desire of all political party, parties should be to present a better blueprint for India and to collaborate together to save India's democracy, so to save our constitution and to, to save our uh, you know cherished ideals on the basis of which this country was formed. I think all those are under grave threat today. And the issues that matter to the people of India, Sanket, what are the issues that people of India are grappling with on a daily basis? In this government's, in the BJP's drunk on power regime since 2014 to 2023, you have seen inflation at a 30 year high. You have seen unemployment at a 45 year high. The economy is in doldrums. People are jobless. Businesses are collapsing. Everywhere, in, look at the agricultural sector. I come from an, the agrarian state of Punjab. More than 30 farmers in this country are committing suicide on a daily basis. The average debt of an Indian farmer has gone up by 54% ever since uh, uh, Mr. Modi came into office. So it's the picture is very grim. Mm. And therefore it's important, I certainly believe it's important for people of India to collaborate. And above all, of course, political parties to collaborate. What will be the permutation combination is, is a conversation for another day. But it's most certainly desired in the interest of India, in the interest of Indian democracy and saving our constitution. And how do you do that by coming together? Because you see, the Aam Aadmi Party launched a Degree Dikhao campaign. Uh, Sharad Pawar uh, of the NCP says, why should degree be a political issue? Then you've got uh, Mr. Uddhav Thakre, who has taken a divergent line from the Congress. NCP uh, not uh, taking the same line as the Congress. So how does the opposition manage these contradictions? And eventually, well, you know, these <coughs> fault lines will come to the fore as they keep happening. No, I agree. I, look, quite frankly, I mean, political parties tend to differ on several grounds from issue to issue. Uh, we have several ideological differences with the Congress party. Uh, but when it came to the disqualification of Mr. Rahul Gandhi, all of us uh, expressed our anguish and we stood 
uh, against the BJP for this absolutely unprecedented and 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 malicious attempt to to you know remove an elected member from parliament. Okay. So I think the there could be a common minimum program. There could be a basic level of understanding. I am not here to propound on the theory of how po- political parties need to come together. I am only throwing an idea that what happened in the ni- year 1977. can be repeated in the year okay. 2024 and aam aadmi party with this new brand of politics can play a significant role in that journey okay. i I've, i've previously also whenever we've discussed alternative form of politics or or how to defeat the mighty bjp i have often spoken about how we need a new brand of politics a new vocabulary of politics a vocabulary of politics that that and a new grammar of politics that catches the popular imagination of india i think that is also lacking okay. today all these things need to come together well it's your big moment uh, recognized as a national party so congratulations and thank you very much for joining us thank you thank you thank you so much thank you Uh, professor Sanjay Kumar, sociologist and professor CSDS, Mr. K C Tyagi, secretary general spokesperson of the JDU, Aprajita Sarangi, MP of the Lok Sabha for the BJP. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Dr. Nasir Hussain, Rajya Sabha MP of the Congress Party, and we'll be joined in by uh, a few other esteemed panelists also in just a short moment from now. But Mr. K C Tyagi, I want to begin with you first. You see, uh, there are some parties that have been uh, downgraded as a matter of procedure. nothing else and then there are others who have been upgraded we spoke to one mp of a party which has now become a national party they feel that a 1977 moment is here uh, in 2024 main aap se kaisi jaagi ye janna chahta hu ki abhi bhi vipakshi ekta ke liye jo kadam uthaye jane chahiye kya wo kadam uthaye ja rahe hain khas taur se aise waqt par jab humne dekha ki sharad pawar ne कांग्रेस से और विपक्ष में जो बाकी दल हैं उनसे एकदम अलग लाइन ले ली ये संकेत जी मैं 77 के मोमेंट का हिस्सा रहा हूं जी बिल्कुल और मैं अभी आ, अपने प्रिय राघव चड्ढा को सुन रहा था मैं उनसे टोटली डिसएग्री करता हूं जब वो कहते हैं कि पीपल्स यूनिटी तो पीपल्स यूनिटी तो जनता के द्वारा चुने गए सांसदों और पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज के जरिए होगी कैसे ये तमिलनाडु में पीपल्स यूनिटी कर लेंगे दिल्ली में बैठ करके मैं उनके राष्ट्रीय पार्टी होने पर मुबारकबाद देता हूं लेकिन इससे पहले एनसीपी सीपीआई सीपीएम समता पार्टी बीएसपी एसपी ये सब राष्ट्रीय पार्टी रह चुकी है तो आज नहीं है सेवनटी में जो एटमोसफियर था That was a people's moment led by Jayaprakash Narayan, और उससे भी कुछ नहीं हुआ तो मैं थोड़ा समय आपका और लू उस समय चौधरी चरण सिंह जो थे सबसे बड़ी पार्टी के नेता थे लोक दल के वो चाहते थे कि टोटल अपोजिशन यूनिटी हो ना उसके लिए जेपी जेपी तैयार थे जेपी वही कह रहे थे जो आज राघव चड्डा कह रहे कि नहीं पीपल्स मोवमेंट होगा और जनता अपने आप फैसला कर लेगी जब हम सब लोग जेल में गए तो जैसा मोवमेंट हम एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे थे ना तो आरएसएस का तरफ से हुआ जो सबसे बड़ी उस समय सेना अपने आप को मानते थे चौधरी चरण सिंह बहुत लोकप्रिय नेता थे उत्तर भारत के ना उनका कोई आंदोलन चला जयप्रकाश जी बहुत लोकप्रिय थे ना उनके कहने पे सड़कों पे लोग आए जब हम जेल में चले गए सारे सिविल राइट्स खत्म हो गए प्रेस की आजादी समाप्त कर दी गई और दूसरे सब फंडामेंटल राइट खत्म हुए जब हम जेल से आए जनता तंग हो चुकी थी फिर भी जेपी को लीड लेनी पड़ी एक पार्टी बनाने के लिए एक पार्टी बनी एक चुनाव चिन्ह बना हमने आपस के मतभेद बुलाए तब हम जीत पाए यद्यपि दो साल के बाद लड़ झगड़ के हम बैठ गए लेकिन जो मैं कहना चाहता हूं वो ये है कि आज भी जनता में निराशा है यह भी सही है पर लीड लेने के लिए नीतीश कुमार जी ने सितंबर के महीने में सोनिया जी से और राहुल जी से आकर के मिले थे और लालू प्रसाद जी सात महीने हम लोगों ने बेकार की हमने तब उनसे कहा था कि आप बड़ी पार्टी हो एक तो मैं एक और चीज क्लियर कर दूं रीजनल पार्टी का जो बना हुआ संगठन है जो बनाने का प्रयास है वो विपक्षी एकता के लिए नाकाफी है इसमें कांग्रेस पार्टी का होना पहली और लाजमी शर्त है यद्यपि हम लोगों ने भी जो पॉलिटिक्स में समाजवादियों ने जो स्थान बनाया है वो कांग्रेस पार्टी से छीना हुआ है तो हम भी अपना नहीं खोना चाहेंगे लेकिन ये ईमानदारी की बात है कि कांग्रेस पार्टी को भी उसमें रहना है 
कांग्रेस के हमारे मित्र कहते हैं कि हम फोकस में रहेंगे तो भाई फोकस में रहने के लिए तो बहुत सारी पार्टियां आपको मानने को तैयार नहीं है लिहाजा कि बीच का रास्ता है जिसको बोलते हैं नीतीश फॉर्मूला ऑफ अपोजिशन यूनिटी 2024 वन अगेंस्ट वन ये हमने बिहार में किया है संकेत जी हमारे 17 अठारह साल के पुराने रिश्ते खराब थे आरजेडी से हमने वो ठीक किए हमारे 50 साल से रिश्ते अपोजिशन के थे कांग्रेस के उनसे हमने नॉर्मलाइज किया सीपीआई सीपीएम सीपीआई एम तो बिहार एक अकेला राज है सो वन कैंडिडेट अगेंस्ट द बीजेपी दैट्स द फॉर्मूला दैट मिस्टर के सी त्यागी विच वॉज बाय ओरिजिनल फॉर्मूला प्रोफेसर संजय कुमार डू यू फील दीज फॉर्मूलाज यू नो दीज फॉर्मूलाज आर इवन रेलिवेंट इन द रन अप टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इज इट इवन अचीवेबल विद अबाउट थ्री हंड्रेड प्लस डेज लेफ्ट संकेत यू हैव आस्ट टू क्वेश्चन इज इट रेलिवेंट I think yes, it is relevant because that's the only way you can, you know, stop prime uh, BJP for coming to power in 2024. But your second question, is it achievable? Is it possible? I think there's a big question mark on that, Sanket. I would put a big question mark because if we look at the nature of contest in different states and look at the kind of posturing by leaders of different political parties, I think uh, it's very difficult, almost impossible to achieve. This one to one fight against BJP. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Congress has to be a part of this formation. And yet, Dr. Hussain, we do see that there are many divergent views within the opposition. on extremely basic issues so in that sense a common minimum program a common ideology or a common meeting ground is something which has not been agreed upon do you think does only a post election formation is possible and nothing before that too many egos involved uh half of what i want to tell here uh see there is something called common minimum program which i think uh, the upa uh, experimented for 10 years uh, under the leadership of congress party uh, any alliance will have to have a common minimum program because all parties have different ideologies they have different leaderships they have different viewpoints they have different visions but then uh, parties do come on a on uh, on one platform on the basis of programs which i think we have done that in the past during upa1 and upa1 uh, upa1 and upa2 from 2004 to 14 2014 now in parliament uh, you have seen last few sessions uh, where opposition parties in parliament both in lok sabha and rajya sabha have come together on various issues against the present dispensation especially in the last session which was a washout thanks to uh the disruption from the treasury benches that even uh, in this session almost 20 parties came together on different issues together on some issues uh uh the focus was the focus was same uh, maybe uh, the way we fight on the issue was maybe different for a couple of parties but most of the parties were on the same page but then the question is as you say how do we take this unity outside the parliament to the people and how do we how do we take this uh, uh, unity towards 2024 election I, i'm sure all parties are thinking on the same lines there are discussion outside outside the uh, parliament there are discussion at the level of leadership and i am sure as many of our senior leaders from different parties including jdu rjd uh, dmk tmc uh, aam aadmi party they have all uh, spelled out certain things in public domain there are certain things which needs to be discussed and thrashed when we all meet uh, in the days to come no What for instance dr hussain you see the Do demand we... for jpc is something uh, where the tmc and sharad pawar are not in agreement then udhav thakre has uh, so, today mentioned something about babri demolition which is by the way not the congress party's position aam aadmi party launched a degree dikhao campaign sharad pawar is not uh, uh, convinced with that idea so we do see very very strong see, and powerful see, contradictions on certain very basic issues see 
See, see you have to understand that uh, during the course of five years, you will have so many issues in public domain where different parties will have different approaches for it. For instance, you spoke about the JPC. I don't think any party out of the 20 parties that were there uh, are out against the Adani scheme uh, were against targeting uh, the government in the Adani scheme. What they say is, a couple of parties say JPC may not be the uh, right demand. They said that Supreme Court monitoring en uh, inquiry committee is something uh, which is okay with uh, uh, something which is okay uh, with the R. Hmm. But at the same time, there are eight, 17, 18 parties which say that JPC is the right demand. But none of them say that the demand for an inquiry against Adani's scam or a demand for an inquiry against the government in the uh, uh, in the in the Adani scam. Uh, is, no, is not to be there. Everyone is there with the demand. But what demand that are to be there, may, they may have differences. Okay. Nobody is saying that there is no scam. <coughs> Nobody okay. is saying that the government is not involved. Sure. Nobody uh, is saying uh, that uh, the Prime Minister is not involved. The BJP. Everyone is saying there is a scam. Sure. Miss, Miss Aprajita, I want to come to you now. You see, a lot of uh, talk has happened about how opposition comes together. And as Professor Kumar says that... Uh, uh, you know, it's not something which is impossible. It can be done. Uh, as a political party, which is a force right now with the maximum number of MPs going into uh, possibly a third term, because that's the sort of con confidence that your leaders are exuding. I want to know from you uh, your view on efforts <coughs> in opposition unity. A oh, very good evening. I would say that strong opposition is the hallmark of a vibrant democracy. And we in the Bharatiya Janata Party, we in the treasury benches would definitely like a very strong opposition. But unfortunately, at this juncture, opposition unity seems to be a mirage. Now, let's analyze the ways that they have been actually operating in all these months. There are two distinct camps in the opposition. One camp comprising Lalu Yadav, Sharad Pawar, Nitish Kumar, they are pro-Congress. And there is a camp, KCR, Mamta Banerjee, Akhilesh Yadav. In fact, they would have anything but Rahul Gandhi at the helm of affairs with Congress by their side. They would definitely not uh, go for that. Hmm. They all have prime, minister, prime ministerial ambitions. Now, there are three questions which I would like to place before these opposition people, before you before the ta on the table. Number one, who is the cementing force in the opposition? See, every time there is a leader who is required to bring everybody together. This is one question. Number two question, what is their strategy which actually is accepted by all the opposition parties? Now number three, what is the common agenda of the opposition? I don't think they have answers to these questions. Before 2014 general elections and before 2019 general elections, they went for this kind of kawaiyad, this kind of parade. I remember Sharad Pawar having held a couple of meetings at his residence at that point of time, but nothing materialized. Very recently, we know KCR had gone to Nitish Kumarji in Bihar, but immediately after he came out, I think there was some kind of difference. Now again, Mamta Banerjee ji had come to Naveen Patnayak ji a couple of uh, weeks back. But they came out of the room after discussion and they just gave a common statement saying that they want a very strong federal structure in the country. Yeah. So nothing materialized. So my point is that they have to come together. They have to discuss the strategy. They have to have a common minimum program, if I can use that uh, expression. And then only then they can think of battling against BJP. Okay. See, Bharatiya Janata Party handles the entire thing very professionally. We are aiming at more than 300 seats this time in the Lok Sabha. And we are actually working very hard for it. Okay. We have Do a strategy. Dr. Shantanu we Sen, Rajya Sabha MP of the Ground Realities. Congress is now also with us. And we are Ms. putting Sarangi, in hard work. Back to you. Come just, just allow me a moment. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sen of the Trinamool Congress is also with us. Okay. Dr. Sen, you see, uh, at a time when your party has lost the status of being, uh, you know, a national party, at a time when many other parties have also lost that status, uh, do you feel it's, it's about time that one must not 
just talk about opposition unity but actually look at a formulation or a formula as suggested by uh, Mr. K C Tyagi which was the old socialist formula of one candidate against your principal opponent. Before I answer your question, I must tell you one thing. Whenever you are inviting some guest, please try to do honor to that particular guest. I have been waiting since last 35 minutes. Hmm. I don't think it is good for any guest from a whatever particular My, my apology is Dr. Sen. And here I am representing the... No, no, no. Every time this has happened even before. Hmm. This should not be done. I must... I, I am telling it on record. Anyway, yes. let me come to your answer. Hmm. Trinamool Congress is the third largest political party of the country and Trinamool Congress is the second largest opposition of the country. But my, my, to my utter surprise, you are more obsessive regarding this united opposition and you are much less obsessive than the much more important issues mm. like inflation, like unemployment, like West Bengal is supposed to get thousands of crores of rupees from government of West Bengal like misuse of central agencies, like Modi Adani scam. So far the opposition's unity is concerned, you have to keep it in mind that the people of India, they have made up their mind and they were totally united. Here there is a going to be fight between Modi and the people of the country at large. And after the election, there, was, there is a possibility of post poll alliance. People of the country, they have made up their mind to oust BJP. And the stand of our party is very clear in a particular state, the particular political party yeah. which can take BJP head on, which can defeat BJP politically, that particular political party should be supported. Like in Uttar Pradesh, Akhilesh Yadav should take the lead, in Bihar Nitish Kumar said that should take the lead as, as, as in our state of West Bengal, Mamta Banerjee will be, will be taking the lead because already Trinamool Congress has defeated Miserably BJP and Narendra Modi and Amit Shah, they have tried their best, they have left no stone unturned in our last assembly election and they have come to know what the mindset of, of the people of Bengal is. So people of the country at large, they are already united and during this election, all the oppositions, those who are really having hmm. the anti-BJP attitude in their mind, they will definitely come together and in a particular state that the party which can defeat BJP, they should be supported and finally there will be a post poll alliance to decide who is going to rule the country. People of the country will be voting against No, BJP. so Dr. Sen, you are an advocate of a post poll alliance, is it? Our first and foremost idea, yes, our party supremo, Madam Mamta Banerjee has categorically said, once again I repeat, in a state, the party which can take BJP head on should be supported. Hmm. And later on, the question of post poll alliance comes. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll have to stop for a short break at this moment. When we come back, I'm going to come back to Professor Sanjay Kumar and Professor Geeta Bhatt and uh, take in their views, their closing comments on what they feel about uh, uh, efforts in opposition unity. Back in a bit. Welcome back uh, to this discussion. Uh, Professor Geeta Bhatt as well as Professor Sanjay Kumar, uh, just quickly coming back to you. Professor Bhatt, if opposition wants to come together, whatever their terms of reference may be, uh, should it really matter to the ruling dispensation? Or do you feel that monitoring the nuances of how they maneuver is, is of consequence, is of importance? Well, uh, Sanketji, uh, you see, uh, opposition unity is uh, something that uh, it has been, uh, you know, in question even in the last 2019 polls. I remember that uh, just before that, when Karnataka state polls had happened, we had seen a very big show of the unity of the opposition parties in Bengaluru uh, immediately after the 2018 assembly elections of Karnataka. But uh, later on, what happened to uh, their call uh, for the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, we all have witnessed that. But the point here is that, you know, there are certain very recent uh, happenings also which reflect on uh, that uh, irrespective of whether in the nuances one would like to go or not, but the fact remains that uh, these political parties 
if they have to come together they need to look at the larger picture probably which they have not been able to do in recently in west bengal in sagar digi congress party had won the election which was a stronghold for decades of the trinamool congress and after that the trinamool congress has been uh, you know they have been uh, they did not stand with the congress party uh, on many issues in the recent uh, uh, proceedings of the uh, lok sabha and also they have charged them of double speak saying that they they and the communist party came together for winning this election so these kind of uh, happenings are going to we are going to witness it even in the upcoming elections uh, in the state elections also and also in the 2019 elections and besides the unity of the the, the whether the opposition parties will be able to come together or not another important aspect that we need to ponder on is that whether the people of this country will be in a position to trust these parties of coming together and giving them the kind of governance which they are witnessing for the uh, past 8 uh, 9 years mm. so that is also something which you know they need to win the trust of the people to actually believe them that they together are not going to be there just for okay. uh, you know taking power but actually for serving the people okay uh, professor sanjay kumar just quickly coming back on this point of trust of uh, you know electorally certain formations as mr k c tyagi was mentioning of having one candidate against which is something which has been tried in the past also uh, you do come up or at least try to come with a formation like that but beyond that for people to trust the electorate to trust because you know if you look at the 1977 formula all permutations combinations were put in place but it could not last beyond 2 years so there were trust issues uh sanket in the talking about the trust i think when people get upset or people are uh, not happy extremely unhappy with the ruling party uh, and at that moment they don't look at whether they would trust the opposition whether they would trust who, uh, whosoever is contesting against the ruling party's candidate so uh, when that situation comes people don't look at, people don't keep aside the question of trust or distrust but i don't think we have reached or the country or the people have reached such a situation the situation is of that kind that people are ready to vote whichever candidate is put against the bjp candidate in large number of constituency that situation has hasn't come and if that situation doesn't come then people do really care about whether they would trust the candidate who is would have been put up against uh, the bjp and remember sanket if such situation arises that there is a one candidate against bjp the bjp's campaign will be around uh, in order to defeat modi in order to defeat bjp all the parties have come together and this narrative has been already yeah, been built yeah. built by the bjp that uh, yeah. while prime minister modi keep saying main corruption ke khilaf ladai lad raha hu aur sari vipakshi coalition of corruption correct corrupt ha corrupt partiyan mere khilaf ekjut ho rahe hain so i think this narrative people will maybe people will trust this narrative more than the narrative which opposition will try to build okay okay very very interesting point that has been made however now uh, mr nitish kumar is trying to restart talks of a future alliance at a time when sharad pawar dropped the bomb thank you very much for joining us on discussion number 1 thank you so much So a statement was made by Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on foreign soil where she was asked a question on uh, targeted attacks against minorities in India. She responded, "We would like you to listen to what she said and then we begin our discussion." To say it's all the blame of the government of India, I would want to say then tell me between 2014 and today has the population dwindled as the deaths been disproportionately high in any one particular community so i would rather invite these people who write these reports to come to india i host them i host them let them come and let them chat along with me and prove their point so on the show we are asking a simple question nirmala sitaraman's minority report is she stating a fact when she says that the population of muslims has not diminished in fact uh, uh, it's only growing so this is proof that they're not being
persecuted as uh, perhaps in the neighborhood. Is this uh, a fact? Because it is. But then does increase in population necessarily mean uh, no targeted attacks? Uh, can that argument really work? I would like to introduce our guests on this discussion. Professor Geeta Bhatt continues to be with us. So does uh, Aprajita Sarangi, MP Lok Sabha of the BJP. And we also have Mr. Mahmood Paracha, lawyer of the Supreme Court. Ms. Sarangi, uh, I would like you to answer this question first. Do you feel that this is uh, a correct assessment to make, that just because the population of Muslims has grown in this country, it means that they are, they are not victims of targeted attacks? Whatever Madam Nirmala Sitharaman has said, I think it is definitely an indicator of the fact that we are walking the talk, Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas or Sabka Prayas. We want an India where everybody gets his or her due. And for that matter, I must say that there has been absolutely no persecution whatsoever. We have tried to kind of improve the status of living of all, including those of Muslims. Imagine the way we debated for, the, uh, for saying goodbye to the triple talaq and we brought that bill and we passed the bill in the parliament. So I think this Prime Minister Modi's government has done for our Muslim sisters. Now I have lots of figures. I wish I could get time and I could be kind of placing these figures on your table. Sure. Pre-2014, you know, out of the Muslim population, only 20,000 people have been given skill training. But after 2014, this uh, figure has gone up to 2 million, 2 million skill training imparted to the Muslims. 5% had been absorbed in government jobs pre-2014 and now during these 9 years it's 10%. These are all government figures and can be verified. 3 crore scholarships pre-2014, now it is 5 crore scholarships. 70% girl dropout rate before 2014 and now it is just 30% girls school dropout rate. So I think on all fronts we are trying to do our best no, for Ms. all Ms. including Ms. Sarangi, Muslims. You see what you are highlighting is uh, of course uh, the human index and that is appreciated. I mean uh, I don't think anyone is debating that. The question specifically was on targeted violence and statements that are made against the minority community. And to that tell me what uh, kind Dhakur of violence? of the BJP, uh, Parvesh Varma of the BJP uh, on the Haridwar Dharm Sansad and, and the subsequent action that was not taken. Now all these things have put uh, a great degree of doubt in the way the BJP is, you know, what you are saying and what is happening. See, law has to take its course. We never interfere with the way the judiciary would function and law, the courts will function. So whosoever is to be prosecuted will be prosecuted by the courts, by the judiciary, by the Supreme Court or the High Courts. So I think let's have faith in the judicial system. Let's have faith in the constitutional bodies. And as far as our Muslim brothers and sisters are concerned, I am sure they are aware of the fact that all the, uh, the, the provisions of the budget also has been increasing with every passing year. This has to be acknowledged. Okay. And there is peace and sure. tranquility. Me me now give me, give me, give yeah. me instances. I mean, give me instances. See, let's let's uh, talk with facts and figures. No, no, but I'll Prime give you Modi's facts and figures right here. Prime February Minister Modi's government wants to talk. Cow yes. vigilantes, they kill Muslim men in Haryana, drive with bodies for 20 hours. March 2022, Muslim pickup van driver transporting animal carcasses brutally assaulted by villagers in Mathura. And this list goes on all the way back to 2015. I mean, uh, this is a very long list. It will take a lot of time. But Mahmood Paracha, uh, do you feel that what was said on foreign soil by Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman is also a fact that Muslim population has increased? However, the rate of growth of the Muslim population is dipping faster than the rate of growth of the Hindu population. This is also a fact. But it is also a fact that targeted attacks are also happening on Muslims. Everything is a fact. But the biggest fact remains that a uh, cabinet minister, that to finance minister of the country goes to Washington and raises India's internal issues. I mean, this is the worst than any member of parliament going to any university and saying things. This is our own cabinet minister. 
going and raising our internal issues and trying to pre present a picture which is so hollow that that will be used as a platform she was asked a question <laughs> that's what i'm saying she should have said being what a minister, kind of statement is this yeah now you kind cannot statement you is this not now a simple member of parliament going there and talking there so this is worse than that that is one two <laughs> then you say something i'll give you a right to reply mr prajita can i can i finish yes please or will i be getting another chance no 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 please carry on now the fact remains that this argument was such absurd argument there are supreme court judgment there is empirical data there is law commission's report there is there are reports of schedule caste community uh, schedule caste uh, commission reports schedule tribe minority commission's reports which say that targeted killing of schedule caste schedule tribe and muslims are on the rise now exposing india by saying such an absurd thing that because the population is increasing population is increasing that but india is going down on every human index not just muslims schedule caste schedule tribe so exposing india to such a dangerous situation by our own finance minister and that to something which she should not have done and i mean we will discuss our problems fight within the framework of our constitution inside india but not outside this is absurd ridiculous all this is being done now main thing today remains what is the main issue mr adani and mr amit shah mr amit shah himself goes to bihar and says that i will uh, hang these people upside down this is the message the home minister is giving so nirmala sitaraman saheba has exposed india to this kind of criticism okay, mr amit okay. shah so you you have compared this to rahul gandhi uh, rahul gandhi speech uh, professor bhat yes. yes professor bhat how would you respond well sanket ji i think it is very ironical that a you know a country which is the one of is the largest democracy in the world is the mother of democracy we have to prove you know our secular credentials on a world forum because there are there is an ecosystem worldwide which uh, tries to you know produce the kind of reports trying to portray that minorities are not safe in india now historically also we are the we you know on our soil first mosque outside the middle east during prophet muhammad's time in the 7th century chiraman mosque in kerala was built on this soil there can be innumerable such uh, you know examples which can be given here 1000 polish polish women and children were saved by maharaja of jamnagar during the world war 2 when at that time nobody including the british were ready to take them and save them for more than 2 years he looked after them during that time and you know and then they returned back to their country so it is really very really unfortunate but as sarangi ji also you know explained with the data you know we can we very clearly see that in the past couple of years the the way the minorities have been empowered and the way they have been integrated with the mainstream earlier Absolutely. they were secluded they were not the part of the mainstream at all they were always been given trying to be portrayed as if they, that they are being favored by giving them you know various kind of schemes but they do not want to be patronized they I'm, want I'm to be I'm part again, of so you're talking country. about you you are talking about human development index i am talking about no. issues of targeted attacks because that was the crux of the question uh, yes sanket ji you know there have been there have been various such unfortunate incidences but is it that they only happened in the last couple of years 2007 and 2013 muzaffarnagar riots who was the, uh, nirmala sitaraman ji said it very correctly it's a state law and order is a state subject okay. who was in power at that time in uttar pradesh we very okay. well know that bhivandi riots in 1970s which is one of the worst riots in the you know in the history of riots in this country who was in governance at sure. that time in uttar pradesh in the 1980s in merit when the riots took place it was the congress party which was in governance mm. the fact remains that these are some unfortunate incidences which have taken place but they do not so you feel that there is an ecosystem that which minorities propagates are this however i think uh, it is also equally important to address issues of concern particularly related to targeted attacks and violence through action and is that action happening i think that is a subject matter of debate thank you very much for joining us 
uh, Mr. Mehmood Paracha, Aprajita Sarangi as well as Dr. Bhak. Thank you so much. All right, story number three now. We all know there is a huge controversy brewing in pole-bound Karnataka between uh, the Congress as well as the BJP. Both the tall Congress leaders in Karnataka have raised the issue of Nandini versus Amul. What is this? Amul, of course, we all know is a household name. Nandini is the Karnataka version, uh, which is a state cooperative. They uh, supply milk uh, and various other products. Uh, every state has uh, such a cooperative of farmers. Now, Congress feels that Amul's entry into Karnataka is going to cannibalize and eat into the share of Nandini. Is that really the case? Joining us right now is the MD of Amul, Mr. Jain Mehta. Thank you very much, Mr. Mehta, for joining us. Uh, my first question to you is, uh, your first thoughts on this controversy? Uh, per se, let's uh, uh, first uh, understand that this is not a controversy of Amul versus Nandini. Amul and Nandini are both cooperatives owned by the farmers of our respective states, uh, Gujarat and Karnataka. And we've been working together uh, for not just last few years, but several decades uh, to make India the largest producer of milk in the world. So we work with the common business model. The Amul model itself uh, has been replicated there. And uh, the purpose and the mission of both these organizations is the same. So there's a huge degree of cooperation between both our cooperatives. And um, together, uh, we've been able to benefit both our farmers as well as consumers. You know, Mr. Mehta, uh, do not intend to drag you into a political battle, but just wanted to know from you as the MD of Amul, uh, you know, there are certain concerns that have been raised that you will go there and then you will end up affecting the sales and the network of Nandini itself. How do you respond to this? This is a very, a very uh, wrong assumption that uh, Amar, our entry into this pouch milk market of Bangalore in a limited way is anyway going to hurt uh, the farmers of Karnataka. Actually, the things are uh, very different. We've been working very closely uh, of not just uh, selling our fresh milk uh, in Karnataka since last seven, eight years in North Karnataka. We've been selling in the Belgaum Hubli region, uh, the same Amul milk in pouches at the prices at which we are planning to sell in Bangalore. So, uh, and nothing has gone wrong with Nandini. On the contrary, our premium most product, Amul ice cream, we are making at Karnataka in uh, three of the facilities of Nandini and uh, been doing good business since 1998. So, this is how we've been able to create a market of the milk uh, and the using of their facilities uh, in Karnataka and South India under the Amul brand name. Uh, so, huge amount of collaboration exists. And our entry into Karnataka at the prices of 54 rupees of Amul versus 39 rupees of Nandini, our select distribution effort only through e-commerce and uh, a very limited uh, range of products available actually poses no threat to Nandini in any way. Uh, so two things we have to do to uh, uh, bring things, put things in perspective. A, the association and relationship which exists between Amul and Nandini and that our pricing and marketing mix is not going to hurt the farmers. So both are known to Nandini and the farmers of Karnataka. Only if few people are being misled by someone uh, through your medium or any other means, we are trying to assure that both organizations continue to work for the interests of the farmers. There's nothing wrong in our effort to build our market in a very silly, limited way. Uh, with our price points in Bangalore and uh, we continue to have enjoy strong relationship with them. In fact, the managing director of Karnataka Federation has gone on record saying that Amul is no threat to Nandini. So I don't think uh, that is a big issue around it. Only thing is presenting the right facts will put things in correct perspective and uh, wiser sense will prevail across all spectrum of the society. Mr. Mehta, in a recent interview to uh, a newspaper, I read you saying that this is not a case of Amul versus Nandini. This is a case of Amul and Nandini. Can you tell us, uh, could you elaborate uh, why you say this? How is this a collaboration? That's what I said. The, we, since we are both similar organizations, both farmer-owned organizations, both cooperatives working for a common cause, uh, there is a huge amount of cooperation between cooperatives. I mean, I talked about the ice cream being, Amul ice cream being packed using Karnataka's milk. I can also uh, draw your attention to the fact that during COVID, when there was a glut of milk, there was no demand of milk and milk products. 
we uh, manufacture uh, we used kanandini's milk to manufacture up to 5000 tons of cheese which is close to 2 lakh liters of milk every day and that cheese was purchased by us and was sold by us so uh, in crisis co cooperatives come together work for each other if nandini wants any technical collaboration they come to us we share our entire our business model our processes our facilities and whatever help they want we can we extend to them so this has been an ongoing practice between both of us uh, our, our organizations and that's why it's always amul and nandini it's never amul versus nandini mr jain mehta i wanted to ask you this question have you faced uh, a similar backlash or resentment or uh, you know doubt in other states because i'm pretty sure amul must have faced this in the past also you exist in many states outside of gujarat so have you faced do you have any experience of something like this happening in other states uh, see we we have had a fairly symbiotic relationship on the same lines with all other states where we market and uh, we make a point to ensure that the local state cooperative brand dominates the market i can give examples of saras in rajasthan we've been selling milk in rajasthan for more than 20 years saras sale has not come down by a liter Uh, they have grown the market. We have grown the market. In fact, we procure the milk together in the respective states. Be it Bihar, be it uh, Punjab, be it uh, Rajasthan, be it Madhya Pradesh, be it Haryana, be it Maharashtra, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh. So, in most of the states, we we procure milk also. We market milk also. And you'll be surprised to note that the prices of milk are either comparable or their prices are higher by uh, lower by just couple of rupees. We are higher by a couple of rupees. So, we never undercut any local state cooperative brand. and we work with them in tandem as far as the procurement of milk is concerned and also sales of milk in concern in the same market and no cooperative ever in any of the states and i mentioned a dozen states uh, have had any issue of uh, amul working with the local state cooperative brand because fact of the matter is very clear two cooperatives brand can are more successful in keeping the private and multinationals out which ensures that the exploitation of farmers can never happen both from the procurement point of view and consumers definitely benefit when they are having two strong cooperative brands available to them and uh, that expands the market also so this is how has been our relationship and that's why uh, we are very confident that once the karnataka consumers uh get two brands available to them which has been always happening since 2015 16 as far as some markets are concerned Uh, i don't think there is any reason to worry and the kind of advantages nandini enjoys in uh, karnataka market and amul would never have that benefit uh, there is this is not going to be even one liter cannibalization of an nandini customer to an amul customer for sure on the contrary we will protect the market amul operates at the higher end at the current prices nandini operates at the mass market rates and together actually we'll be able to ward off the competition of almost a dozen brands in that market and then eventually the farmers of both our right all right jain mehta thank you very much for joining us uh, md of amur and clearing the air let's hope that people do not milk a controversy that's all the time we have in this edition of left right and center news continues on the other side stay with us